Wherever you're joining us, guys, welcome to another edition of the Youth Show that comes your way every Saturday from the hours of 5 to 6 p.m. My name is Mohd Mukhtar Jalo, and I am your host today, but not the only host in the studio. Um, I'm going to allow Zadan to introduce herself shortly, but once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in and supporting the Youth Show all this while. If this is your first time, thank you so much for being here. If this is the fifth or tenth time you are here with us, Thank you guys so very much and once again um happy new year um you know it's a new year new things that we are planning for you guys and we have a lot of lot of things to discuss but first satan hold on hold hold on satan hold on hold on um i'm yeah i was you are on me all right I said I've been away for the longest time and I'm back. You've been here spiritually, so it's still the same. Okay. But <laughs> physically, physically, I've been missing for a long time. And good evening, everybody. I'm Satang Dumbuya, also a co-host in this show. And we are glad to have you with us. Like MJ said, thank you so much for being with us throughout this journey. It's been amazing. We just ended 2022. We just began 2023 and we're yeah. wishing you all the best that 2023 can come with and everything that you pray in, for in yourself. In the new year, do we ask for Salibo? No. no. Salibo no. is just how you do. No. Ah, okay. And they go, yes. you like, you Salibo in the studio. <laughs> yeah, but you go ask for New Year gifts, you know. Yeah. Actually, uh, people have, you know, tried a lot within right. 2022. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of trying times for the Gambia in 2022. A mm-hmm. lot of things were difficult. A lot of things were going wrong. A lot of things were going right. right. But as Gambians, we maintain peace. We tried our best to maintain peace, you know, to cohabit, to also interact and tolerate each other. I think we should continue that. Mm-hmm. As it is fondly said, Gambia is the smiling coast of Africa. Not because there is no war or anything, but because of the people. The people right. are nice. We are tolerant. We are tolerant of each other, right. and we love one another. We we respect our culture. So kudos to every Gambian out there for keeping up the peace and you know tranquility in this country and making sure that we grow our country into what we want it to be. And we look forward to many more years where Gambia would become the Silicon Valley of Africa. Right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yes, but I have to. That know. was the title. <laughs> Silicon Singa- Valley of Africa. Jame would say the Singapore of uh, Africa, right? Yes. But yeah. man, um, it, it has been a very blessed um, four or five months that we've been here with you guys, mm-hmm. sharing with you guys, and then trying to expose more garments here. Mm-hmm. But the goal this year is we want to bring more rural youths into our program. Yeah. I don't mean it in a derogatory way, but um, as in Gambian youths in yeah. the rural areas who are not seen. The idea of this youth show, the formatting we have chosen, is to celebrate Gambians. And we want to focus it mostly on people you already know. We want to focus mostly on people you do not know, communities. Mm -hmm. Probably you only had on name, but you never know what they engage in to expose them. To tell you guys what they do, and hopefully they inspire you in everything else you do in your daily, daily life. To bring them in the limelight as well, because it's very, very important. Indeed, indeed. There are a lot of, um, I mean, 
amazing young people up country, but they don't have the platform compared to those within Banjo and Combo. So I think it's very important. And I'm sure our listeners will be open to ideas like this. I, I 100% think so too, because Paradise, it's, uh, it's one of the best radio stations in the country. And then we are across the country. So mm-hmm. this is us trying to expose. And in fact, people are listening to us on www.paradisefm.gm exactly. across the world. Exactly. So the idea is to celebrate as many Gambians as we can. Mm-hmm. And we cannot do that. We don't know every Gambian in the rural communities. You guys out there, let us know. Text us numbers. Text us people. We can call them in this city. They don't have to come all the way from Basa to be exactly. here. We can just put a phone call. We can mm-hmm. buy credit. That is the most it will and speak cost to us. Them. And then speak to them. You can always reach out to us even on our phone. Um, our social media yeah, pages on like on Facebook you can send us a message you can give your suggestions your contributions your opinions and we are open to all of these things 100 100 and then you can text us directly on 3113815 mm-hmm. um, Sarah I'm not sure you have to come for the 710 no problem because yeah. so far I dedicated 3113815 to um, anything that goes to the public but now that I'm using it as my WhatsApp also, yeah. it's crazy. But um, mm-hmm. 3113815, when you have people, young people who are engaged in entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. who are doing philanthropy in your communities, young people who are into ad, uh, um, um, advocacy, advocacy in general, do call us, we will talk to them. We will bring them here, we talk to them, talk about their life, their, li- um, their challenges, and then what inspires them in the work they do. And in that same vein, today we are going all the way to Farawa Sutu. Um, um, as our first guest of the year, we are starting uh, it far away from the Greater Banjo area. Um, and then we are having the Farabasu um, Youth Association with us in the studio who will be talking to us about the work they do as a community-led or community-based organization. But also, you know, talk to us about uh, what inspires them to push, what the challenges are they facing, as well as, you know, how they are making so that they lead by example to what we want in terms of leadership, in terms of, you know, governance, in terms of being transparent and all of that stuff. But without further ado, let me just allow our guest to introduce herself. She's, um, you know, no other person but. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to you all. No, good afternoon. Um, this is Kadi Sayang from Farawasadu Village. Right. We are the vice president of the Farawasadu Youth Association. Right. And presently elect as President of the Farabas Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Congrats, why? Congrats, <laughs> <so> much, <Kady. laughs> I know, we know, we were talking about it earlier that, you know, today is your Congress. That was before we went live. And then yeah. we were going to ask about the outcomes, but luckily, um, congratulations. Congratulations, Kadi. <laughs> right. I am here with Satang. Um, we co host this program. And then, you know, like you heard us say, the entire idea of the program is to celebrate young people of the country. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, on behalf of the entire team, um, congratulations um, on, on that and then I'm sure we, in the second half the pro- of, of the program we'll talk more around the Congress and then the outcome and where you want to push but now that you are elected as president we are really yeah. interested to know what your visions are in the future but first um, before we get into that because it's like we're putting the cart in front of the house mm-hmm. just quickly <laughs> uh, tell us um, who Kadi is and then um, you know what you do other than leading um, the, the, the Faraba Youth um, Association Faraba Sutu Youth Association Okay, um, Kadi Sanyang, as I said before, mm-hmm. um, a graduate mm-hmm. and a teacher by profession as well as a youth activist. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for now, I am teaching, as I earlier mentioned, mm-hmm. and but that does not stop me from taking part in the youth activities in contributing my quarter to the um, national development by taking part in... Um, activities like village work, mm-hmm. community-based work, mm-hmm. and also at the national level. Right. Yeah, I've been part of so many national organizations like Activista, mm-hmm. um, Corps of Tomorrow, mm-hmm. and United Peace Federation, Gambia Chapter, mm-hmm. yeah, etc. So, um, for the Activista West Coast, I one time served as the Vice Chairperson. And also serve as the national trainer for activists during the campaign programs and leadership activities. Mm-hmm. And for UPF, I'm a member mm-hmm. and also the financial director. Wow. And hopes of tomorrow, mm-hmm. I was a member as well. Wow. Yes. Hopes of wow. tomorrow. 
amazing amazing um amazing um caps that you've you've wore and mm-hmm. then amazing caps you're continuing to wear despite yeah. the fact that these are not all your professional livelihood like these are not the things that get you um the the the, the monthly income to sustain you and your family and yeah, it's, it's mm-hmm. my social um responsibility as well i'm a gardener oh, nice. we have a <laughs> village garden nice. where i have my bed is because this is, that was the system that we were brought in. That mm. was where our school fees were paid, and yet still, some of my brothers, mm-hmm. my siblings, my nieces, my nephews, mm-hmm. or my cousins' school fees, and some of our um, social needs were derived from, mm-hmm. and that is still in existence. That's and it, it does not stop me from fulfilling my responsibilities as a teacher and mm-hmm. delivering my lessons for notes as expected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, Kadi, if you talk about leadership, especially women in leadership, you have a lot of hindrances that could stop you. For example, but, um, I'm not getting you well. Okay. I am saying, if we talk about um, women in leadership, you have a lot of challenges. You have a lot of um, challenges on the way, things that are going to stop you, going to limit you and your performance. How do yeah. you, um, how do you, let's say, how do you combine all of these rules? And up to this level, you're still able to perform in school, which is your professional life, and you're able to do the youth work as well as balance it with your family life. Um, I think in the first place, life keep contributed a lot to it. Uh, because when you went through life skills training, then when you have that communication skills and the interpersonal relationship, you understood it well, then you'll be able to um, cope with the situation and how to move along with the people and the society as well. I came from a family that does not have any problem with me taking part in social work because this is something that I inherited from my dad who was one time an alcalo and my mom who is still a woman leader so my brothers and sisters as well have been one of my motivators. Each time I want to um, relax, they will tell me, no, you can't do this, keep moving. My friends as well, my colleagues in the youth work, my mentors are also people who are also very helping. And the society also contributes a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is, yes, but at times people will say that there are certain things that women do not need to do or women should not do certain things. But I think anything that you have the wish or the aim to do, Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, no matter the challenges that you may come across will stop you from uh, conquering those challenges and to achieve your aims and objectives. This is what I have. This is the belief that I have, that anything that I think is good for me, anything that I think will lead success to me, Mm -hmm. no one can retire me from getting it. I might go through the ups and downs, face challenges, Mm -hmm. At times, I will sit back, cry out my heart and say that, no, I I think I don't have to move ahead with it. Mm -hmm. But at times, people behind me will tell me, no, you don't have to. You are strong and you can do this. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that keep me moving. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I know is, yes, I'm from a poor uh, poor, uh, background. I'm from um, a rural village, Mm -hmm. but what the urban area uh, activists can do, or the people in the urban areas can do, mm-hmm. we can do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Because when it comes to education, we went through the same syllabus, mm-hmm. and we might be taught by different teachers, but these teachers were also taught by people mm-hmm. who went to college, and they were bad mates, classmates, or schoolmates with th- some of those teachers who were posted in the rural Gambia. Mm-hmm. So I don't see any difference in anything when there is commitment, determination, and dedication to it. So these are some of the things that keeps me moving. And for the garden, I know, yes, because this is what keeps me moving. This is what took me to where I am with the help of the Almighty Allah. Mm-hmm. So no matter how much I go to school, I have to perform my expectation as a teacher, fulfill my uh, responsibility as a servant, mm-hmm. civil servant, but when I come home too, I don't forget where I come from. Mm-hmm. That is the background, the society that I came from. Mm-hmm. The village that grew me to that extent of people to become proud of me. Mm-hmm. For people to know who really Kadi is. 
I started from somewhere. So I don't have to forget about where I started everything from. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that also keep me moving. Mm -hmm. And I will not be, um, how do I call it again? I will not be fair if I don't mention the Combo East Youth and Children Development Alliance. Mm -hmm. And of course my elder brother, Ali Ustanyam, because he was the first person who introduced me to the youth work. Mm -hmm. I do not want to go, but he keeps asking me to go. Mm -hmm. So this, he keeps giving me fair, mm -hmm. and he will always tell me that this is sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And you don't just get up and become su uh, successful just like that. Mm -hmm. If you are into anything, you must prepare your mind and your body, your soul and everything mm -hmm. that I will do this. And if you are to start it also, you, no matter how much they criticize you, forget about everything. Mm -hmm. Go for what you think will get you success. And anything that will bring development to you, make sure you just keep your head up. So, I think in thought, these are some of the things that keeps me moving, Sata. Okay. That, 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 that's quite impressive. And then, um, you know, by the way, Sata also Ali. Um, I, yeah. I learned last night that actually he's your brother, but Ali was the one who gave us the connection for Faraba. And then I yeah. was talking to your outgoing president now, Nelson, who later said he cannot make it, but he will dedicate you to, delegate you to be on the show. So um, you came back to this, but shout out to Ali and then um, all the other Nelson. people because, yeah, Nelson and the, and the group. Um, he Ali was my classmate, Nelson mm. was my classmate, Amazing. and the first ever executive, he was the one who was my chairman. Right. Amazing. And this Congress today, I succeeded him. Right, that's uh, amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Ali is equally doing an amazing work as a young Alcalo and then, you know, doing a lot of things in Faraba. Um, you know, but um, I, I just want to ask something. I know you've done it, but just a formatting. I know, okay. um, you know, for us in the combos, we have that. It's not like, you know, there's a lot of myth around what rural people enjoy that combo people do not enjoy, um, mm -hmm. it's like, which is not true because we face similar hardship, but probably not as you, right? Because I've had yeah. those conversations with, um, with people from the rural area who be telling me, you know, it's hard. We have to go to school. We have to work. We have to go to the farm, combine it with school. But... I can tell you there are t tens of thousands of combo youths here who are equally doing the same. They have yeah. to do a lot of chores before they go to school, if it is in the afternoon shift, mm -hmm. or they, you know, they go to school in the morning and come back and do chores. But I understand like the, there's a difference too, in the sense that sometimes the resources we get at school is better yeah. than the resources you guys get, get at school. But my question yeah. actually is... And even the distances from the house yeah. to the schools. Yeah. You know. I agree. So I just wanted to just give me a perspective of uh, on a daily basis, right? like you going to school let's ignore college and all that, all that stuff like high school or junior school what was a typical day like for kadi when i was going to school yes yes when i was going to school because from my nursery school down to my um green nine mm -hmm. i did it uh, in my village mm -hmm. the, the primary school the nursery school i did it in paravas here the primary school in the neighboring village that is home and the upper basic as well mm -hmm. in Safura. Because we don't have a primary school in Farawasi to here. Mm. So um, for some, it was 2.5 kilometers every day from grade 1 to grade 6. We mm. had to walk by foot, except when we have lift, then we can be carried, with, uh, carried by someone like drivers with wow. vehicles or motorbikes mm. or on bicycles. Wow. And that of Kafuta. It is the same thing. It might be 1.5 kilometers to the highway, but we have to walk almost the same distance from the highway to this upper big school. Wow. Um, but from my grade 10 to 12, I did it in the Gambia Muslim Senior Secondary School in Banjul, mm. and where I faced so many difficulties. Um, as a rural child, then, I was not exposed to so many things because when you come to the village, we have a small village. We know much traffic, you know, blocks traffic jam or too many traffic mm -hmm. or vehicles, movements of people also. And looking at the nature of the people in the rural Gambia and in nature or the living condition of the people in the urban uh, Gambia are different. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what you enjoy at home, mm -hmm. what you are entitled to have at home, might be different from when you get to another environment like a place that you have never been to or a place where you have never stayed before mm -hmm. 
So these are some of the challenges that I face mm -hmm. because traveling is number one. Mm -hmm. For here, when I was going to the primary and junior school, I walk by foot mm -hmm. because it is a walkable distance. Right. Um, whether I go to school with lunch or not, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter much because I usually eat breakfast at home before going to school. Wow. And sometimes we have food in school that also keeps us moving. At times we don't even eat our lunch because of those things. We have to keep them for other things. But when you look at the urban Gambia, everything is costly. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get everything for free, but anything that you want, mm -hmm. aside from home, you need to get money to buy it. That's mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, I cannot walk from where I was staying down to the school. So at some point, I stayed at home because I don't have fare to go to school. Mm -hmm. So these were some of the challenges because I missed my lessons at times and in fact, my tests. Mm -hmm. But it does not stop me from moving though. And sometimes I had, I had to find it difficult to read my book because if I close from school, mm -hmm. plus the traffic, um, going up and down, running from one vehicle to another. You, you know Banjul and traffic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before I get to Wellingara where I was staying in Serakunda, mm -hmm. at times it is usually late. So to read my books, I become tired and exhausted. So as a matter of fact, it has affected my, my performance in school. Mm -hmm. And some of my teachers at some point noticed it and even my classmates. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they would think that maybe there are stresses or some of the things that I'm going through, this is why I'm not making it up. Right. But I usually used to tell them that it's because of the traffic going up and down mm -hmm. and the place is so far. Right. Ah. So I need enough time to relax, else I won't be able to perform well. These are some of the things that gave me a headache. Mm -hmm. So these are my main challenges when I was going to school in the urban Gambia. Wow, and that, that excludes uh, the fact that you have to wake up early in the morning, in fact, because you have to try and catch traffic. Sadang has a exactly. question. Sadang will have a question. We'll, we'll answer that very quickly before we go um, to the break. And then once okay. we are back, we're going to continue the conversation. But Sadang has a question for you. Um, Kadi, I know how it feels. Actually, I've not, I've not lived a life like that, but I, okay. I always see students that live like that, and I always feel um, empathy for them. Even though yeah. I cannot solve their problems, I, you know, I always complain about the busy traffic, and I and I think about the kids, not not mature people going to high school, but younger children that are in maybe primary school and even junior school, traveling yeah. long distances here within the combo just to go to school. It's really, yeah. really, really stressful, man. It's it's very stressful, and yeah. it's good that you share some of these things because, um, girls that are your age when you were in high school they could learn from this and they can understand that okay Kadi was a girl like me and if she did yeah. it i can do it too mm -hmm. so it's yeah. really important Kadi, can you kindly share what are some of the challenges you face as a female um leader we understand that most of these communities are not open to having um females as leaders what are some of the challenges you face i know you've talked about your support system so so, yeah. so 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 i think what we will do is kadi um th 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 yeah, th that question is really big mm. uh, it will take a lot of time okay. and then um okay. we will soon go for a short break you know okay. and then um once we come back from the break we're going to talk more on that and then then get into talking about faraba sutu um youth association yeah, okay. in general but um i just want to say this you know um I, I think you have a great story and you have a lot of things that young girls can learn from, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like Sarang is saying, man, we, we, we do not have the full time, because I mean the combo also, the privileges are levels. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you yeah. have, you have VVIPs, VIPs, and then you have the Chomo Chomo who are the trying to be VIPs. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, 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 but to be honest with you, man, um, it's not something we have not seen because I and Sarang are also fortunate, especially Sarang who's traveled across the country many times. And she's, she has not lived this long distances like you guys have, but she can mm -hmm. tell about these things. She knows about these things. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break. Um, when we come back, um, we're going to continue conversing with Kadi and then who's going to talk to us more about um, the association and what she's been doing and keep inspiring us. Until we come back, this is the youth. So please stay tuned. <laughs> Good. 
Hear the people them balling, it's Paradise FM. Number one. Hear the Gambian shouting, it's Paradise FM. We are back. We are back. Oh yeah. Your favorite youth show is back on your heavenly radio station, Paradise 105.7 FM. This is a show that gives young people the opportunity to share their experiences, aspirations, and inspirations to inspire change in the entire nation, the Gambia. From youth in agriculture and entrepreneurship, to youth in advocacy and philanthropy. Join us this Saturday and every other Saturday from 5 to 6 p.m. As we shed light on the work of these young people and inspire you to persevere in what you do. You cannot miss this. So don't, don't miss it. it. Thank you guys so much for staying tuned with us on the Paradise uh, 105.7 FM, your heavenly radio station. Or if you're following us online on www.paradisefm.gm, this is the youth show that comes your way every Saturday from the hours of 5 to 6 p.m. And I am here with the amazing, magnificent, beautiful Michael Satang Dubuya. Satang. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Satang Dubuya. Yes, Namonella, but we are glad to have you. Right, right. Right. <laughs> I hope so too. We cannot afford to not have you in the studio here. You know, you. Yes, we. So, so before Kadi comes in, you are reminded that you guys can text us on 770-1055, 770-1055 or triple three ten fifty five, triple three ten fifty five. And again, to the Jolas and Seres or Sarahules, triple three ten triple three means three three three. Nyeri three, my triple three. No, MJ, so triple three ten fifty five on QSL. So we will not be able to pick calls. You guys can leave us a message on those numbers seven seven zero one zero five five. Seven seven zero one zero five five or triple three, my three 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 one zero five five three 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 one zero five five. Kadi, you understood the question from Satang? Right. They asked the question about the challenges that I face as a female. I guess. Yes, as a female leader, uh, do you face any challenge? Ah, Kadi, Jian, like, can do for respect. Well, like, Kadi, need like, nangam, nangam. Um, Kadi Munu Mawa, my devil, Kadi Amu Kadi Fala Ame Dole, man, and definitely legally a cattle to you know, Gasal Pahabia, all of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I face challenges <laughs> because the uh, first challenge that I will say, I will, I will say cultural barriers or culture of silence, right? Because 
in our traditional uh, Mandinka culture and Islamically, they will say women will not be a leader. Mm -hmm. Wherever we are, men will be the one who should um, lead us. And we also did not have a voice mm -hmm. at some point. Um, we, we feel weak. Mm -hmm. So these were some of my challenges because at the beginning, I was weak. I feel like anything that people say is okay with me. I was not confident. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I have ideas in me, but to voice it out is usually a problem. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, I was able to conquer all those fears. Mm -hmm. And at, sometimes even discrimination, I would say it, or stigmatize, stigmatize, stigma that. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes um, I'll be doing some certain things, you will see people pointing fingers at me. Mm -hmm. You cannot do this. Sometimes if I want to do some certain things, people will tell me that this is not a kind of a work that a woman can do. Right. These are some of the things I, I, I believe they are discriminating me of. Mm -hmm. Because um, as my trainees mm -hmm. on life team will always tell me, mm -hmm. Um, no one is born with a motor or a pistol. Mm -hmm. Neither no one is born with a cutlass. We all came into this world as a human. Mm -hmm. So it is based on the societal norms and values that some of these things are attached to people. Right. Under natural circumstances, the things that we are born with, um, those are natural things that no one can, um, no one can take from the other. But when it comes to community participation or contribution, whether you are a man or a woman, what you think you can do, the belief that you have, I believe you can do that if you are set to do. Mm -hmm. So saying people that uh, molding bl blocks is not um, a work that a woman could do, mm -hmm. um, I see all those things are society, uh, socially constructed um, things. Mm -hmm. Because personally, I'm not saying, telling myself to people, I usually go and get firewood for myself to cook, for mm -hmm. my mom and for my siblings. Mm -hmm. And which people think that it is only men who should do that. Right. So um, when it comes to molding bricks, mm -hmm. I'm not good at it. But when I see men doing it, sometimes I feel like joining them mm -hmm. to do some certain things. Right. So this is also part of it. And when you come to um, farm work, Mm -hmm. I'm not good in, 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 in cutting down the glasses with cutlass, mm -hmm. but sometimes I will try to make one or two attempts when I see people doing it. Mm -hmm. So I think I am putting myself into their suit, but others will think that uh, instead of being a woman, mm -hmm. I am making myself as a man. Mm -hmm. So these were some of the challenges because I, I, I think they were trying to demotivate me. Right. And even at some point, I would tell my elder brother, um, Aliu, mm -hmm. um, sometimes I will even tell my elder brother who is Buba Sanam, commonly known as Pra, mm -hmm. he was a footballer. Sometimes I will in fact tell him that I think you people have to put your hands together with Aliu mm -hmm. and send me to GTTI so that I can go and learn from Trafford because I, I, I am trying to become a mason or something like that. Right. <laughs> Those were old jokes because mm -hmm. we were constructing our house. Mm -hmm. So I believe if I'm not cooking now, I used to be with the boys because I know them. Right. So I, I would tell them that give me a state, let me do this and let me do that. Mm -hmm. So this were kind of thing. But some people will think that I think I can do this when actually I cannot do it. Right. But if I'm set to do it, I believe I will do it. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many women or ladies out there who can do that who are constructors mm -hmm. and who are architectural. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think these are some of the things that demotivate me before. Right. So, but when, when I was able to build my confidence mm -hmm. through my mentors, my family, right. my colleagues, so I was able to conquer all these fears. Mm -hmm. So no matter what way or in any way that you come to me, mm -hmm. I usually know that, yes, I know how to move along with you. Right. Yeah. All right. Ama am amazing, Kadi. Um, guys, please don't call the numbers. Just send us a message on seven seven zero one zero five five. 
7701055333105533101055 or 6611055 or come here. Um, Kadi, let's 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 go let's come to um Faraba Sutu Youth Association. You have a very interesting story. Um, and I really want us just to focus only on Kadi and then uh, you know you have a very amazing story. Um, and I think we yeah. probably will try and get a story where we talk more about your life and stuff. But Faraba Sutu Youth Association, when was this form and what activities are you currently engaged in? Yeah, the Faraba Sutu Youth Association was formed in two years ago, mm-hmm. which is 2020. Right. Yes. Um, the Youth Association, because many of us, especially Nelson, mm-hmm. have we are exposed to youth work mm-hmm. so we have been part of so many youth organizations but we do not have one in Farabas to here mm-hmm. so um nelson has been texting me and other people within the village aliu my older brother and even others outside the village mm-hmm. down to the district youth committee mm-hmm. that i also want to have a youth organization in my village that is Farabas. Mm-hmm. so we have been welcoming the idea when he tried his best to make sure that he put the little things that he has in place, mm-hmm. then finally he came and met some of us. Mm-hmm. Then we also um, supported his idea, mm-hmm. then call on a congress. Right. So when we call on a congress, people came out. Mm-hmm. Um, they, we were able to do the congress successfully. Mm-hmm. That was where we were elected as the first executive of the Farabasa Youth Association. Right. So after the after the um, election, mm-hmm. um, we have series of meetings with our elders mm-hmm. and our younger ones as well mm-hmm. to put the, um, our objectives to them. Mm-hmm. That yes, we are in the uh, rural Gambia, mm-hmm. and when you look at the um, Pombo East in particular, mm-hmm. usually we we are always at the imaginary line. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to development, mm-hmm. I would always say that it will stop at Bekama. Mm-hmm. And anything that has to go down to the phonies, it will start in block. So in the combos, it will stop in Bekama, and in the phonies, it will stop in block. So mm-hmm. usually, the jump combo is when it comes to development. Mm-hmm. So we, we realize that um, the politicians will come when it comes to elections and all those stuff. We vote for them, yes. And once they get what they want, they forget about us. Right. So we decided to come up with this youth organization to start up things on our own, mm-hmm. to build up things, to know what is happening in the wider world or within the country or what we can do for ourselves to make sure that we bring meaningful development to the village. Right. So from the election, as I said, we met the people. Mm-hmm. Then from there, we came up with a plan. Because we only have our constitution, mm-hmm. and we also do our best to register with the Attorney General of Chambers, uh, National Youth Council, mm-hmm. Regional Youth Committee, and even the District Youth Committee. Mm-hmm. So upon doing that, we now know that we are registered fully, and we can start up anything that we think we can. Mm-hmm. So we first started with the market project. Mm-hmm. We decided to have a market because our village, we do not have a market. Mm-hmm. There are so many things that we want. Right. But we first start with the market. We need a water den, mm-hmm. a borehole, our garden, the football field. So these were all things that we need. The school as well. But we said, why don't we start with the market? Because what we have now, our, our some of our mothers, our sisters, or our brothers' wives have their tables. Some of them will, in fact, spread us how to empty bags of rice to put on the things that they are selling at the market. Mm-hmm. So this was why we said market should be our first priority. So right. we have to start with the market first. Right. So so um since since um we will soon run out of time. Um, okay. Yeah, you know I, you can you can list it in the next question about funding. For example, um I know you've done a lot of maybe just list down some of the things you've done, and just probably okay. tell us you know what your source of finding fundings are. Okay. The list of things that we do are. Uh, I can say our greatest achievement is the cultural festival, mm-hmm. and which we have done twice. Mm-hmm. And also, we have bring uh, we brought the village um, together. Mm-hmm. Um, there is nothing like tribalism 
here mm-hmm. when you come today mm-hmm. and there's nothing like being a religious bias or gender or even clan level ethnicity or all those stuff mm-hmm. so this is achievements that we got mm-hmm. anywhere you go to and even at the executive level it is not only one side that is there mm-hmm. it is all the tribes that we have within the district uh, sorry within the village mm-hmm. are part of it and it is not Islam, uh, religious motivated as well no thing like uh, uh, segregation and all those stuff mm-hmm. so the first cultural festival and uh, we have our 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 this one it was only one day mm-hmm. and which we have the cultural performance of dances of all the cultures that we have in the village mm-hmm. so the second one we brought in kumpo that is the jola cultural dance because that was what the majority won mm-hmm. and so we brought in jamba kangkuna for the mandinka tribe mm-hmm. so for this upcoming one we are planning to bring out another culture for possible we can have three or four cultural um activities that we have to do mm-hmm. so the achievement the market is already we have already started the construction of the market and right. it is already in progress mm-hmm. what we have started is even more than what is left now right. it is an ongoing project S- S- and S- many, uh-huh. go ahead um so the side of the funding mm-hmm. the, we we raise funds from donations mm-hmm. We also raise funds from the cultural festivals because we sell tickets, we sell T-shirts, mm-hmm. and we also send in patrons to very uh, people that we think can also support us. Right. And I will not do justice without also thanking our 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 diaspora association. Mm-hmm. Though the association is not also strong, mm-hmm. they were formed three years ago, and we they have less than ten people. Mm-hmm. They, their membership is less than ten people. Those who are contributing, but they were also supportive in any initiative that we come out with. They will also uh, send in their quota to make sure that the event is successful. And even the market project are of recent, they were able to send in twenty thousand dollars that we can add to our account to make sure that we continue with the work at the market. That is very good, Kadi. I think right. that that. That is very good, Kadi. I think that is a lesson for all other communities. Um, traveling abroad does not mean that you can't help your community. Um, yeah. Kadi, we're sad to inform you that we have come to the end of the show. It was really amazing interacting with you. But before we let you go, can you kindly give us some of the advice that you have for young people? Because this show is here to inspire other young people. You have just 30 seconds to do that, Kadi. Yeah, I have started it with telling people that whatever that you are having in your mind to go in for, when it is good for you and it will bring success for you, do not listen to anyone. Just keep your head up and you make sure you go for it. And you make sure you keep going. Thank yes. you so much, Kari, for those wise words. Uh, we hope to have you next time on the show. And thank you so much, our listeners. Thank you for ha- for joining us throughout the show. We hope to be with you again next weekend. Thank you, and it's a bye from me, Satan Dumbuya. Thank you, Satan. Yes, thank you so much, Kadi, and thank you so much, Satan Dumbuya. Thank you to our listeners um, for being here with us. Thank you for supporting the youth, so thank you for being part of us. Like we said, we want to have as many um, young people in the rural Gambia as possible, so reach out to us on Facebook, on uh, WhatsApp, on 3113815. 9590. Please, did you know what it's 7109590. Right, so... <laughs> Um, you guys can reach out to us, so get as many people as you can, and then we will try and have them in the studio. So until we come back your way um, uh, next week, um, you know, it's a bye-bye from the two of us. And once again, Happy New Year, and thank you so much for being part of the youth show family. <laughs> Sunny 